Okay, uh, we have uh, Wiley Coyote's model of Gabe Corners or Gabe Corners Connie, uh, which was ported originally by Deja Vu uh, for Star Trek Legacy. Um, I've done a little bit. I've done some changes um, to the material names and to the groups, partly in breakdown and partly in renaming them all ma to make it easier for me to track down the parts I need. Uh, right now we're going to be adding the brake nodes to it, um, otherwise the ship's the same as it was pretty much. So here's the port Bassard, the main nacelle, a miscellaneous bit up here. Uh, some other miscellaneous bit and the miscellaneous bit which are the pipes basically like on the these ridges on the back okay so if we hide those you'll see the entire nacelle disappears which is what we need um, uh, when doing this now I did forget to break off the damage mesh so if that falls away you'll still see the damage mesh um, so I, w I do need to slice this part of the damage mesh off and give it a mesh of its own. Um, so in order to do that, we could select faces. Oops. Move some of this out of the way. Vertex. So here it is now our port in the cell damage mesh. There's our port in the cell damage mesh piece. Now, where's our full damage mesh? Now you'll see our damage mesh is now missing this port in the cell, which was our intention. We will do the same thing. The bi vertex helps me in this situation that I know I'm getting all these pieces up in here in this situation hold down the shift key so you can continually select hide those but select by vertex is slow I'm selecting a lot of vertexes here so if I had turned that off it would have been a lot quicker regroup this and this is my in under s and I set C for the starboard nacelle. So now that gives me my starboard and port nacelles. Oops, I got the wrong texture on there. Happens when you regroup sometimes. Uh, and the damage mesh material I renamed to default because it works. Um, it could be in any in whatever uh, I just use default default so now we got our model ready to go these are all the port and the cell bits these are all the starboard and the cell bits that I currently have selected um, so these are all going to be on one brake node all the port bits will be on the other brake node and uh, basically when that brake node fires off the um, those parts will disappear the other changes that need made are the hard point the joints need to be changed all these mesh groups need to be attached to the hard point properly so I'm gonna take the existing hard point export to the legacy joint tool ASCII format Okay, now that we exported that, we're going to go over into um, 
uh, to the legacy joint mode we're going to go into the legacy mod development tools hard points um, which are used in conjunction with the file we just exported uh, both the LM development tools and the exporter come as part of the LM tools suite that I released for legacy you want to get the latest version uh, this is the uh, the latest version which currently has not been released so it's got a little different layout than what you can get your hands on as of today which will be seeing release here real soon now this is the blank legacy tree um, but now we're gonna get at uh, this new version of the tool supports Armada, Armada 2 and Fleet Ops as well for Armada but uh, we want to in legacy mode because this is the legacy ship we'll take our joints that we exported um, see the layout's a little different like, like here's the existing mesh group joints um, which actually these should have been up here under the hull zero um, it's easy to get them wrong um, when you're doing it manually in milk shape uh, we'll also look at something else here if I can find the M joints in the grid view we'll see yep you'll see that they're not quite where they should be um, all M joints should have which they do have the proper rotation but all M joints should be at Z all zeros. This should be zero, zero, zeros for all for all the M joints. They're off just a little bit, which means the meshes aren't quite lining up in game exactly like they should. Um, again, this is happens very easily when you're using milk shape uh, itself just to make all the joints. So we're gonna take off these joints. Um, the existing mesh joints but we're going to leave everything else that leaves our lights on the saucer our weapon hard points and subsystem our damage stuff um, so we're going to put these mesh joints which these are the mesh joints that imported with with the import it pulls the group names from here uh, when you do the export so I'm going to add all of those 36 joints to here. You see there they all are. M13 being the first one, M8. They're in the same order as what they are in the group listing. Um, but I'm also I'm going to be adding my port engine. Um, or you can do L Legacy uses L and R engine brake nodes. I use P and S and starboard um, just because I like that better um, but we'll do the legacy ones now we want to grab our uh, all our port related um, mesh groups and we're going to move check hit the move check button check them hit the move check button that moves them all in one pass it's nice and quick that way the other method is drag and drop but you gotta do them one at a time generally I always put my damaged meshes at the bottom of the list so there's our brake nodes. That's all we had to do to make the brake nodes work. Now we can also add brake uh, plasma emitters. And I'm going to increment it. Just so I can get the two. Because now I'm going to add my plasma medium to this brake node because the you can't actually use these increment functions with the brake nodes um, plasma large because these are the two emitters that actually work in legacy and they like I said you can't do the underscore zero one type stuff this function was in there um, hopefully for a future um, 
release of the milkshake uh, M3D exporter from Moonraker. Um, so now this adds our plasma emitters. Now when we go over here, we'll see our M joints, as I mentioned before, are at all zeros. means they will line up perfectly in-game. Um, don't need to worry about pieces being just slightly off, which they were previously not enough that you'd probably ever notice them. But um, it's nice to have them where they should be. So we're going to export this. Um, now this exports to Milkshape 3D ASCII format. So we gotta go over here, select our scene root, hit delete on the keyboard, deletes all your existing joints. Then we're going to import Milkshape 3D ASCII. This only includes bones, but it doesn't matter because they're not there, can't import them. Um, so here's our new joints. You'll see our M, our new uh, M joints. Now, a side effect of the import is we lose our textures. Um, we can save the file and reopen it. And our textures come right back. Um, if you really care to have them. Now the only thing is our uh, plasma emitters are not where we want them. So we need to move them. So to select them you double click on them in this list. And now we can position them where we want them. The medium is on the left or the port in the cell. But you just got to remember where you put them. Otherwise you get the wrong emitter turn on at the wrong time. And there. Now these are, in Ultimate Universe anyway, they are directional. Uh, which basically means the plasma stream will shoot out. Um, because of the orientation, the source point being here, that's, that's the angle that they're coming out at. It'll be shooting out back, a l back into the starboard a bit and back into the port a bit. Now if you want to change that you can actually move the brake node or the brake joint back. Uh, but you gotta do that first because you see it moves your other element. Now then doing this will give us a more upward you can see the angle. It's hard to make out. But the angle is straighter up so it'll be out this way where this one's going to be out that way. So that's really all we got to do and we'll hope this will export right without crashing on us. On, on occasions the export will crash for no apparent reason. Um, best thing to do when you're exporting is don't touch a thing. If you click on something while it's in the middle of exporting usually it crashes. Um, so now we've done our, uh, we've re-exported our M3D. I'm going to use the LM tools again um, to to uh, test the ship. So I go into my 2 and 2 testing mode. I have the ship selected for my ship and the enemy. Um, and if you're testing uh, uh, damage or break nodes, you want D node test or node test map. Um, node test map will activate the break nodes. D node test will activate the damage internal damage mesh and the break nodes. So it's usually the better one to use. So I'll copy my M3D into place and overwrite the old one and we'll see if she exported right. If it exported right, we'll have, we won't have a bug box and we will have the ship. Uh, my ship will be pristine basically and the enemy ship will have the nacelles fall off right at the beginning of the mission. There they are. Mm, see it has its nacelles right now. Now it's nacelles are falling off.
oops, the nacelles didn't fall off because I forgot. These little green things mean um, double clicking on them will do something. In this case, double clicking on ship or s station ship text will edit that M3D or uh, ODF file automatically. Makes it nice and easy to get in here. I uh, have to uh, enable my break nodes in the ODF. Um, and then this one here actually opens the full the legacy path that's here. And anywhere you see that green text in my tools, generally that's what they do is they open whatever's near them. Makes it so you don't have to keep browsing for files and stuff. You can also go down and type it in here. Or if you want to edit the weapons, you can copy them and put any ODF in there, be it weapons or whatever. Makes it nice and easy for that. So now we should have the break noise. There we are. Now you see the nacelles are gone. And you see the plasma emitter. Now the one on the left side is laying down more and the on the right side is standing up. It's because they're directional. And there you can see the damage mesh on the ship. We'll fly into it. Now I would uh, refine the location a little bit on those, but that's about it. And uh, there's one other little thing to do. Uh, set up chunks for your break nodes. In this case, we're going to look for the F constitution. And again, we're using the, uh, another feature of the Allen tool, the chunk tool, chunks tool, as I call it. Uh, your mod source, M3D source, uh, chunks folder for existing chunks, where this is where your chunks are going to, your new files are going to be created. Um, that's a hex editor for advanced usage. So there's constitution. Looking for the constitution right engine. Now that this tool lets you do, uh, if you want, you can just do a straight duplicate by selecting the original chunk. This is telling you the two files that exist for this engine chunk. Um, now we want to, we're going to match these to our break node names which are L engine and R engine so this is the R engine chunk and the chunk we want to make is for the F we pick our model which is the F NCC-1701 in this case and we want to make the R engine chunk so we're going to select R engine so this is the new name and we can just stri straight create the chunks or if we want to edit the textures like this is going to use the constitution the original constitution classes textures for the chunks in this case probably not a big deal um, usually it will change them for uh, hmm okay I don't believe this folder work exists anymore no it doesn't so shit work in progress We'll just put them right here. Uh, create chunks, view files. Now we're going to have the these two files uh, like this with the preceding part changed. And now we want to find the Constitution's left engine and create the left engine chunks. Now, the left engine for some reason has four files then we can take these files 
copy those into our chunks folder which we can hit this view files and copy them and paste them right in there which before we do that I'm gonna go into the testing one more time and actually make sure he didn't already create chunks through for it he did already create the chunks I thought I saw them flying off already you can see there's little bits flying off there's not much to them if those files don't exist you'll see you don't have those streamers and other effects happening now I'm going to take um, the chunks I just created and put those in instead and we'll just see if they look any different I don't know what his are based on so you may end up with a different effect um, if he copied his off of some other model now you see the you see the chunks these pieces that are green and spinning are the chunks so it does appear he used different chunks but they worked well enough anyway and uh, that's how you make the chunks. Just go in here, pick your source chunk, and then assign your other your new chunk names and hit create. It's uh, that simple.